Foot Clan shipped is delivery done different. They're expert shoppers, pick up fresh groceries, tech gadgets, video games, even pet supplies from local stores that you love. You can get everything delivered to your door in about as soon as an hour. Your shopper, they're going to keep you updated with texts from aisles. They can pick in-season produce like a total pro, thoughtful shoppers, convenient service, peace of mind, and try same-day delivery for yourself at shipped.com slash footballers today. That's S-H-I-P-T dot com slash footballers. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. The most valuable introduction to the show. Wednesday, September 16th, Jason Moore, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. The fantasy footballers are back for yet another episode. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet it's going to be another great one. Could be. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, uh, we've got a, a special show today. We do. And statistically, Jason, you're correct because we've never had anything less than a great show. That's right. That's our floor. Yeah. Sometimes they're excellent, but great is at least what you're going to get. <laughs> we have buy sell today. We've got a lot of news to talk about. Michael Thomas freakouts. Mm-hmm. And we had uh, we had the chance a few weeks ago to sit down with Patrick Mahomes and have a conversation about the upcoming season. So we're going to share that with you guys. The, the often teased Patrick Mahomes interview. Yeah. Yeah. It was delayed a little bit. <laughs> it's all right. Good friend of the show. Good friend of the show, Patrick Mahomes. Maybe you've heard of him, but we had a chance to talk to him. We're going to share that with you today. We're going to go through the Thursday night game, do a little preview for you. Mm -hmm. We're we're already in week two. Football's already back (laughs) tomorrow night. I really did feel that way. Like Late last night, I'm like, wait, when we do the show tomorrow, that means football's the next day, and it just doesn't stop. That is correct. Which is great. It is glorious. It's great. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can also find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Go subscribe, click the bell, support the show. The website's the fantasy footballers.com. If you want our weekly rankings, they are up there for week two. We've got the start sit tool. We've got player profiles this year. A lot of great stuff. And of course the community at jointhefoot.com. It's time for some buy sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week, you two went... I, we're throwing Lev Bell's buy sell out because he was injured in that mm. game. But you guys both... But we were correct. We. Uh, oh, you did sell. Okay, few, you can keep them in. fantasy it points, d- so let's keep I, it. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I, the, the guy over here that bought the 10 fantasy points, well, we're just we're going to throw it out. Don't worry about that one. It was actually Brooks. He didn't put the check mark next to it. Mm-hmm. But all right. All right. You guys were perfect regardless. Mm-hmm. I was so shocked. I, I apparently bought DJ Chark in the top 15. I, I, I was pretty sure Brooks was wrong, so I went back and listened. But I super bought the top 15. <laughs> so, um, But Darren Waller ended up with six catches. The over-under that we put in here was five. Um, DJ Chark was not a top 15 wideout. He was actually just three for 25 and a touchdown on three targets. So you guys both sold that against Indianapolis and were correct. This week, week two, buy, sell. Naeem Hines, 13 fantasy points. Mm. It's week two, faces Minnesota. He had 15 total touches in week one. Last year, he never surpassed 11 fantasy points. I actually have a take here, but you guys. This is, this is half point, by the way. Yeah, so I think, and this is this will seem hot because I like Naeem Hines. I talked him up all off season. I think week one's the best Naeem Hines games, game you're going to get this entire season. Well, yeah, a double touchdown game is a lot of players peak, and that yeah. was awesome. But I, I do, I, I both agree with you, and I think Naeem Hines is going to be involved. He would have been, you know, we talked about it on the waiver wire show. He would have been one of my top two pickups uh, this morning. I love him, but I'm still going to sell here on this line in half PPR. I think in a, a full PPR, this is a good line. I would probably take the over. 
Uh, I'm going to sell. I think he's just under. Yeah, in half point, I will sell as well. as ju Just under, though. I mean, he could easily surpass this. It, if this were full PPR, like Jason said, I would be buying, but just under. Well said, just and under. I'm selling as well. Still a great play. Mark Ingram, top 20 running back in week two against Houston. Ooh. He was 7 for 29 last week. He only had 36% of the snaps. I don't know. I I'm in a an interesting holding pattern with Mark Ingram because I don't know what the philosophy was because they toyed with Cleveland and this game was not competitive. Would they be giving J.K. Dobbins high value touches? You know, those um, more important competitive game touches. Well, let me ask I you I don't this. know. Let me ask you this. Let's assume that they toy with Houston and have a similar game script. How would you... See Mark Ingram in that setting because that's as a top what I, twenty RB, I would sell him in that setting. I don't know if they're going to toy with Houston in Houston. In fact, I said last week, Bill O'Brien, this is the kind of game he wins. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and sell it, anyways, because I don't think he's going to get into the top twenty, but I think he has a better week. What is hard to gauge about Mark Ingram is not that the the role of the starter for the Baltimore Ravens uh, is not valuable. But he did not look like the best running back on that team last week. Uh, he looked. He looked top three. <laughs> but, but yeah, where, where top would three you running back on on his, on on his own Ravens? team? Yeah, where would you slot him? Looking at the performances, not just the box score, but we watched it with I Dobbins, the Gus Bus. I didn't see enough out of Gus Bus to okay. know. But I, I'm I'm just joking. But the point is, he he did look bad. This line is easily the hardest uh, for me of the three buyer sells here because this is, does he get a touchdown or not? That's what this is. If he doesn't get a touchdown, he's not top 20. If he gets a touchdown, he's going to be top 20. I'm going to give him a touchdown this week, so I will buy the Ingram top 20. But I do that giving the fantasy advice that it didn't look good week one. He, just had, he only had seven carries. I mean, it's hard to draw, like – you, you're Mr. Mark Ingram's underrated his entire career. Seven carries should not bury Mark Ingram. I agree. I just bought him top 20. So I'm not burying him, but I am giving the the yellow warning light of pay attention. This line is dastardly because I have him exactly at 20 currently in my <laughs> rankings. So I will sell for margin of error. Keenan Allen, a top 20 performance. Are you buying or selling, Andy? I said I was selling. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed it. Keenan Allen, a top 20 wide receiver in week two oh, against man. Kansas City. I am going to – he was wide receiver 64 last week. I'm going to sell this. Yeah, he usually torches Kansas City. I think that's irrelevant. Past yeah, play with Phillip Rivers it's is all gone. all out the window. Um, I'm, I'm going to sell when I watch that game. And, and granted, it's one game. I mean, it, it, it won't stay this way 16 out of 16 games. But week one – the primary target appeared to be Mike Williams. Tyrod Taylor was looking down the field. Um, that's going to continue to happen if they're down, and uh, it's, a, it's a tough matchup, so I will sell. Yeah, I'm going to sell as well. They, they won the game. They deserved to lose. They should have lost. In fact, I mean, they did they lose. Lost. <laughs> they, they lost until a penalty flag They came lost in. twice. First yeah. they lost <laughs> – when the green touchdown happened, then they lost when the chip shot field goal was attempted, and then they somehow won. Yes. Which they are, of all the teams in football that loses every close game over the last five years, this seemed like payback. Yeah, my point is, like, when you look at the game plan, you're like, oh, well, but we won. We won doing this. And you're like, no, you you didn't deserve to win. You did, this, this offensive philosophy you where, sucked. You, where you're not throwing the ball – to Austin Eckler, where you are not throwing the ball to Keenan Allen. What are you doing? Why are you – it's so frustrating, man. Like, the two guys, they just rewarded two players on this offense with a big bag of money. And they're like, nah, nah. We don't need to utilize these guys the way that has been successful for years and years for this team. It's ridiculous. I expected to see a really low yards per completion for Tyra Taylor when I went and broke down that game. He actually did air it out quite a bit. I mean, the nine targets for Mike Williams, he was over 12 per completion. So, uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know why they didn't go underneath. It's an adjustment period here with the new quarterback. So, Mike, are you selling? Yeah, I'm going to okay. sell. I, maybe Keenan Allen was just getting too open. Yeah, sometimes he does that, and it's really – it's honestly, it's annoying. All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. 
Tomorrow is the final day of their special auction for NFL jerseys only. Bidding starts at $20. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, Michael Thomas, this was the big news yesterday. The ankle is worse than expected. He's going to miss, quote, several weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So lots of mailbag questions coming in about the impact to Drew Brees. Specifically, is he still a weekly starter without Michael Thomas? And then where do the targets go? This is the player that broke the NFL reception record. So when you lose that level of target share, somebody benefits in this offense for fantasy. I think it's going to be Jared Cook. Where do you guys weigh in on Drew Brees and whether you can start him every week and then the ramifications? I, I still think you can start Drew Brees. He's a Hall of Famer. He's He was not made by Michael Thomas. Yeah, he was good before he's Michael Thomas He's pretty good there. for a long time. So I, I think he's uh, someone you can start. As far as the, the receptions, I agree with you that Jared Cook does get a bump up, but the biggest bump up to me is is Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders is a veteran, great route runner. He will be where Drew Brees wants him to be. I know they're they're new to this, you know, he he's a new player and they don't have the same rapport, but I expect like I I would put I would put money that he is the most targeted player. Um and then, you know, you might have even more dump offs to to Camara, but I do realize Traquan Smith is in the running. He was out there for more snaps, but he was asked to block a lot more. When Emmanuel Sanders came in, it was to catch the ball, and he's going to need to do that. To me, the the bump is it, I, I like the Jared Cook bump, but Alvin Kamara, I think, is going to see a whole bunch of targets uh, in the absence. And this is why when we were talking about the injury yesterday, I mean, we didn't have full news, but it's high ankle sprain equals bad. It's always terrible. If a player, if they choose to try and play through it or, you know, they proclaim that they're going to play through it and then you're like, oh, no, it's actually terrible because it's a high ankle sprain and you can't play football on it. All right, the Jets <laughs> placed running back Le'Veon Bell on injured reserve uh, despite him being fully healthy. No, that's not true. <laughs> but dreams are coming true and uh, – <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Kalen Balaj was signed by the, the New York Jets. Now, this is not... We got him. This is not a season-ending IR. No. You don't Three weeks. Love Bell. That's right. This is three weeks. It, it basically... In fact, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they could put Michael Thomas on the IR because of this three-week... Uh, what this does is this says, I'm making the player not be able to come back too soon because Michael Thomas will certainly come back as soon as he is able um, but yeah, three weeks for Love Bell. Frank Gore, presumably the starter, but Josh Adams was also after Lev Bell went out. Josh Adams was heavily involved, so it's really not a situation you want to be even within. We a, know it's like Gore. a twenty foot radius. We know Frank Gore is going to get all the I carries know. he can handle. I mean, it, you would have thought you'd see that last week, and you didn't. I think it's Gore Balage, and it's the exact running back room that. The Adam Gaze has just been dreaming of. That sounded like one name. I think like, it's, it's I think it's, it's Josh. It's Gorbelage. Adam. Ooh, Gorbelage. That, is that, that is sounds that like as garbage. Nice, <laughs> that sounds as nice as that backfield. That backfield that was is the straight Gorbelage. Uh, it was the old foreign minister for uh, Mother <laughs> yes, Russia. Yes, that's right. Gorbelage. Um, Tear down this wall, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Gorbelage. Oh, terrible. man. Some terrible. sweet Berlin Wall references. Yeah, yeah, we like to get those in. <laughs> All right, uh, Rap Sheet reporting Philip Lindsay <laughs> battling turf toe, still receiving a second opinion. First opinion, he didn't like it. Uh, don't be surprised to see him miss the next few weeks. You drop Philip Lindsay? I probably would. It depends. I mean, the, it, everything yeah. is context. How big is your, your bench? But, yeah, I'm probably going to drop Lindsay. Do you drop Philip Lindsay to pick up Miles gas can? Yeah, I would. Yeah? I would yeah, rather have. I would, too. Miles okay. Gaskin on my roster than Phil Lindsay right now. All right. And then uh, what's the latest with this Allen Robinson drama? So Allen Robinson asked for a trade. This is after taking all of his social media stuff away. Then it comes out later from the agent that they have not requested a trade, but that he is unhappy. Yada, yada, yada. He wants a big contract, and the Bears want him around, and they think he's great. And for some reason, they don't want to pay him the money he clearly deserves so tbd but it is possible 
that if the Bears are doing poorly this year and they get near that deadline that you could see Allen Robinson moved if he doesn't have a contract by then. Yeah, I don't think anything's going to happen in season, but we'll find out. And then we do have a uh, Mohamed Sanu sighting. He was signed by the San Francisco 49ers. Mediocre signing of the week. Does this matter for fantasy football, Mike? Uh, I was trying to remember what – so in 2016, that's when Mo Sanu went down to uh, the Falcons – and you know who his offensive coordinator was? Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan. So that's the only reason that some familiarity that it possibly matters. It, like, breaking news. We have breaking news. We have breaking news. Uh, this is. Uh, I I was. I think. This I is, was just scared. Yeah. I've never had you guys peel back the curtain for a split second to anti, You know the anticipation is now uh, building, Mister Moore. Yeah. Uh, but you have a button for breaking news so that you can scare the crap out of me anytime yeah, you want. So what, what's the breaking news? Richard Sherman has been placed on IR. So the, really? the 49ers defense that was without Jason Verrett and now Richard Sherman is – And a hobbled George Kittle. A little bit susceptible. You mean Sh – you say Sherman's susceptible? I'm saying the 49ers defense is, is – I mean, they're still a, a, a very good defense, but if – I mean, if you lose – a bunch of your really good players, you're yeah. not quite as good as when you have them. Okay. Wow. That's what they say, say the old adage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Like I mentioned earlier, by the way, check out jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community. One of the cool things we added this year for the Foot Clan premiere tier is a brand new podcast called The Injury Blitz. After the practice reports on Friday... Uh, we have uh, our injury expert, Matthew Betts, weigh in on all the implications. And this is a humongous part of fantasy football because you don't want to just know, is a player in, is a player out? You want to know whether they're going to be effective for your team. Are they going to be able to be out there and contribute? Or do you need to you know, slide them into your bench for a week and play somebody else? So this is a another resource, another tool that we've added to the tool belt over at jointhefoot.com. The feedback was excellent. People yeah. were really helped by that. This, the, and we don't even like bets. And that's I, what no. shocked me about the response. Yeah, the guy's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but you can check that out in the whole community, all the perks at jointhefoot.com. Like I said at the top of the show, we had a chance a few weeks ago to sit down with Patrick Mahomes and Troy Polamalu and, and, and have a chat ski about the upcoming season and have him weigh in about Clyde Edwards-Alaire and some other uh, things. So we wanted to share that with you before the Thursday night preview. You talking to me. All right, the fantasy footballers are absolutely thrilled to welcome in two-time Super Bowl winner, Hall of Famer, hair champion of the world, Troy Polamalu, along with fellow hair champ, now Super Bowl champ, Patrick Mahomes. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. And we are we're so excited to have you on. Now I have to get this out of the way. Uh I need to address Troy directly here. Um we are all Cardinal fans on the other side of this phone line. And uh I'm on I'm still on like a 30 year plan recovering from Super Bowl forty three. So I'm not sure we're gonna get there. <laughs> Please, please don't tell me that uh, your son Phoenix uh, was born in 2008 as well. Uh, no. Not quite. No, he was not. My son was born oh, okay, that okay. year, and you—you you made you the know. mistake before. Then no, I'm joking. I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh, oh I'm joking. yes. I'm joking. Oh I'm my joking, god, Phoenix, you're the man, dude. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike's son's listening in too. So we we're we're huge Cardinal fans. We'll try not to dwell on that. I, I think it was a little greedy that you needed two Super Bowl victories and couldn't give us one, but we'll just move on. We'll move forward. But uh, let, let, let's start here. This has been a an absolutely crazy offseason. Obviously, there is a lot going on in the world, much bigger than football. Patrick, you just won a Super Bowl. And so my question to you is, how, how do you prepare for a season like this? I think the biggest thing you have to do is go in with the mindset of you're going to accept uh, every single challenge every single day. I mean, you got to expect the unexpected, uh, but the best thing you can do is, is be the best you you can be every single day. And I think that's what I've kind of always had the mindset of doing is 
I go in with the mindset, I'm going to, whatever challenge it is, I'm going to go right after and I'm going to attack it. And, and, uh, that's a, that's the thing that the world that we live in today is that you don't know what to expect, but if you do it uh, to the best of your ability, you can never have any regrets after. Yeah. It's, it's been an absolutely crazy year and, you know, congrats to you on the, the huge victory. You know, we're, we're huge Patrick Mahomes fans and Troy, I, I think this is interesting. Uh, you were in a similar boat to Patrick in the fact that you won a Super Bowl right before there was a lockout where there wasn't training camp. You came back, you won Defensive Player of the Year. How did you approach kind of the uncertainty heading into the season? Yeah, actually, it's it's uh, funny you say that. That 2010 year was kind of a, a little lockout uh, slash. It was a pretty confusing time going through the collective bargaining agreement. Um, but, uh, you know, I think Patrick actually said it best in an earlier interview where he said that I just want to focus on being the best person and, and the hardest worker. And I think you, you see that in him in the, the, the short time that I've had with him um, and just being a great person and being a hard worker. And, and I think that that obviously has displayed itself with, um, you know, throughout his career. And, and if I look back at my career when I actually had that mindset, because there were times when I didn't have that mindset. Uh, when, at times when I when I did have that mindset, I was without a doubt a better teammate and more successful. Um, so I really I, I think that that given these hard times, that's really um, the only perspective that you can have given the uncertainty uncertainty of COVID, uncertainty of the protests, and all these things that are happening. Is that if you attack every day. If you approach every day, it's just, you know, I'm going to be the best person possible and be the most humble and be the most virtuous person possible. And to counter that, I'm also going to be the hardest worker. So I'm going to be that. That means I'm going to be the best teammate possible as well as the hardest worker and the best example of being a best teammate. So going into the 2010 season um, for me is was that mindset um, mm. as I think it is just who Patrick is in, in himself. Yeah, it's interesting because these times I think show you how little you control in one aspect. And then you, the stuff you guys are talking about is the part that you can control. You can control the effort. You can control the attitude. You can control being a great teammate. Uh, this is a, another question I have, because now, you know, Patrick is in the same boat that you were in, Troy, coming off a of Super Bowl. You know, people talk all about uh, Super Bowl slump or, or how difficult it is to come back and do it again. Uh, you know, is it possible to keep that same edge you know, after you win it all going into the new year? Yeah, I, for me, um, I think the, the biggest thing for me is that it's almost, you kind of have, I kind of have it building already again. I mean, I think uh, not being able to kind of do the Super Bowl tour after the season, I mean, with all the stuff happening, just being quarantined, I feel like yeah. I missed out on a lot of the, the great, cool things that you get to do after you win a Super Bowl. And so I'm excited to hopefully try to find a way to get, to get that <laughs> again and, and try to find a way to be able to do it the, the right way this next time and, and be able to go to the stadium and unveil your banner and, and have a full stadium at Arrowhead. And, uh, you don't know if you're going to get to have that opportunity. Uh, it's not looking like we're going to have that opportunity actually. And so, uh, for me, it's, I'm excited, uh, to get back in the, the season, get back around the guys and, uh, try to find the best way to, to build a great culture and go out there and win football games and, and make a lot of people happy. And I think the, that's what we're going to, that's what our mindset is going into this season is we're going to try to find a way to do it again. So we can, uh, have that celebra celebration tour that we didn't get this last year. Yeah, you gotta you have any reason to have a chip on the shoulder <laughs> to keep keep that up. No, that that's actually a really uh, interesting insight. This, this is Jason, by the way. We uh, look, we're a fantasy football show, and, and fantasy football has kind of taken over the world in in some respects. Uh, we know several players who are longtime listeners of this show love fantasy. We've heard players. Uh, who view fantasy football more negatively? Um, what are your guys' views on fantasy football in the NFL? Are you guys fans of it yourself, or do you think it adds or, or takes away from the game? Troy, wh why don't you answer that first? Um, so I guess maybe my perspective may be a little different in the sense that I wasn't a big fan of watching the game, more a fan of playing the game. Uh, of catching, of tackling, and those sort of things, and wasn't necessarily infatuated with the NFL, nor do I know enough about teams and general managers and those sort of things to even, I guess, maybe dip my toe into it. Um, so I, I 
am more of a maybe a pure football player um, and not necessarily a football uh, uh, fan or follow to any uh, in that respect. So I, it may be more unfair to, to ask me that question. Um, so sorry. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, Pat, I, would say, I, would, I would say my perspective. I mean, growing up, I, I did a fantasy football with my dad, so I understand the people's uh, love for fantasy football and doing and doing all the different leagues. And I know my buddies still – still do leagues and stuff that I played in when I was in college and high school and, and doing stuff like that. But uh, I think as long as you keep it fun and keep it like lighthearted and you're just watching the game and it helps you learn more and more players. And it's cool. It's, it's just the certain, the certain people that take it way too serious and they're like messaging players. I'm like, <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. like these guys, I'm I, not just me, but I'm like, these guys are playing their hardest every week. I promise you they're trying to do whatever they can to win as well. And so, uh, the people that do it in the right spirit, I, I think it's an awesome thing. It's just the, the, the little group that, that kind of annoys some players. Sure. I, I promise I, I think, you. I think what, what it I'm, – I'm sorry. I think what it, what it brought out, too, is a lot of different fans as well. You know, there's a lot of women fans that have come out through fantasy sports, a lot of younger fans that come out through fantasy sports. So the, the conversation for me has actually been more intriguing in the sense that I, I'm talking to a more diverse set of people about the game. And that, that to me, as somebody who truly loves the game um, in that way, um, is pretty awesome. Yeah, we, we here as a show, we, we really try to be good ambassadors for the sport. We want to be inclusive. I, I became a fan of football due to fantasy football a uh, long, long time ago. But, you know, it's kind of like you said, it, it's getting more people into the sport. So on a team level, Patrick, um, you know, this last draft, Andy Reid and Brett Veach, they were both quoted saying that, you know, they reached out to you to see who you wanted the Chiefs to draft this year, which uh, I think is good team management. Uh, Veach even said he texted you, you know, without thinking, who do you want? And you said Clyde. So tell us, why did you want Clyde Edwards-Alaire over every other player? And what might he add to the team that perhaps you didn't have before? Yeah, I think uh, with Clyde, I mean, first of all, I think you saw how he improved every single year he was in college. And so when you see guys like that, then you know they're hard workers or guys that are that are pushing themselves every single offseason. So you knew he was a guy that, that could keep getting better, keep getting better every single year and even into the NFL. And then it wasn't that we didn't have it, but I think he's going to fit in our running back room so perfectly of having guys that can not only run the ball well between the tackles, but also catch the ball out of the backfield. And you see guys like Damian Williams this last year, uh, Darwin Thompson, all these guys that were on our team this last year who who not only excelled at running the ball and doing those things in between the tackle, but I also used them in a lot of a lot of situations out of the backfield. And we have so many good receivers and tight ends. They're gonna be one on one with a lot of linebackers and a lot of a lot of guys that aren't used to covering guys in space. And when you have a guy like Clyde who's who can can make people run great routes and, and get open in space, then it's gonna be great for our offense to have another dimension that we can add to it. Yeah, from from a fantasy perspective, we were like, "Oh my gosh, this is the greatest match possible." <laughs> you know, will will he be able to do what he did in college when he was on this great offense with you know the best quarterback in the in the college game? And it's like, oh yeah, he he just goes right to the same situation in the NFL where he's on a you know just unbelievable. I got a question for you guys. I you know, that has fantasy football made you a different fan than you were before fantasy football? I, I, I think so. I mean, w one of the things we always joke about is you could have a Monday night football game between two teams with bad records and have everybody in the league glued to the television screen to see who ends up, you know, winning that fantasy matchup. So it's engaged, you know, like I, I've got a couple small kids that are, you know, not just fans of the Cardinals, the local team, but of individual players and become, you know, humongous fans. My son has worn a Patrick Mahomes shirt around the house four out of seven days since he won his fantasy championship. So uh, I think it's just really made it uh, just more engaging on a on a team by team basis throughout the league. Hey guys, Mike here. We got we've we've had a, too many football questions. We got to talk about taking it up to one hundred because we know you are both a part of taking it to one hundred. The campaign being run by Head and Shoulders. Patrick, I got to ask you this question, though. You were a cover boy. You were, we're taking it to 100 this year. And Madden, you're a 99. What's, what's up with that? How disappointed are you that you are not taking it actually to 100? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed because uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get there. I don't know if they're going to let me get there. Um, but uh, I'm going to do my best to get there. So if, maybe if I have to win a couple more Super Bowls in a row, maybe they'll like get me to 100 or something. But uh but no, Head and Shoulders is, is amazing. Uh, it's, it's a great to be a part of this team. I mean, uh, meeting Troy and what a great dude he is. Uh, 
and you see all the great people around the, um, the head and shoulders team. It's like a family atmosphere. And so I uh, just take it, take it to 100 campaign. Uh, we're we're going to do whatever we can, just like we do on the field, just like they do uh, of keeping a hundred percent clean scalp to take it to 100 and every aspect of our life. And we'll get you out on this question. Better hair. Who's got it. Settle the debate right now. I mean, Tro- Troy's got, he's got the legacy hair. I mean, I mean, come on. I'm not supposed to beat that. I'm not supposed to beat that. We had a hair category on those Madden ratings. Then we'll get some hundreds out of it. Oh yeah. For sure. All right, guys, we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, that was fun. When you have a chance to talk to an MVP. You probably should do it. You should probably talk to the MVP. One thing I didn't mention in the uh, news and notes, a reminder we like to bring up, especially week one, uh, drop it like it's hot. Oh, it like yeah. It's hot. So waivers went through this morning in your leagues make sure you see especially in week one oh man who did people let go of who did people give up on overreact to let hit the waiver wire go it, find kenny galladay on your way oh goodness you know what i mean there, there are dumb people in your league <laughs> whoa, in whoa. your they, i'm just saying statistically <laughs> there are dumb people in your league and if they're not if you don't see any it's Probably you. You're right. going with the Kenny Galladay. I was going to say, go look, Odell Beckham. Go look for Deontay Johnson. He's going to be on yeah, waiver really? wires out there. Yes, he will. Pete, look, if you take the temperature I, wow. of, of Twitter, people were upset. Every single with what? year. Every single year. That's, we, that's the problem. We had a great it, game. No, exactly. With what? It, and the it, fact that it was he was. Juju had the two touchdowns. Exactly. He had okay. the very okay. second place fantasy game. But if you watch the game, he yeah. was. He was a, a 1B with Juju. Just He's the, the kind top. of wide receiver that Big Ben loves. Oh, Those absolutely. Those inside slants, get him the ball in space. He's a kick returner. He can make a play. You're going to have Deontay days, even if uh, Juju absolutely. is is the main yeah. the main man. I was going to say, every single year we, uh, we have people that are listening, and we say, this player might be on your waivers. Smart and, people, dumb people. And they scoff at it, and they go, not in my league. That will never happen. And then we get a message, a DM, like, Dude, he was on my waivers. I couldn't believe it. Thank you for telling me to go check. So make sure you check who was dropped today and every Wednesday. All right. Let's talk Thursday night preview. Thursday night breakdown. The battle for Ohio. This is, this is exciting, man. This is Baker Burrow. This yeah. is number one versus number one. Yeah, I, I'm excited. This is yes. A.J. Green in primetime. Oh, mercy. 0-1 versus 0-1. I'll be saying a prayer for A.J. All right, the Bengals in uh, Cleveland taking on the Browns. Browns are six-point favorites. It's a 43.5 point over under. Hmm. Uh, I We have an office picks pool that we do here. I put in my week two picks, which I think Mike won week one. No, Al Borland, oh, okay. took, he, he got me by one game. I didn't believe. So you and I tied then? Uh, maybe. I think maybe I'd tied. have to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the Browns are six-point favorites. I took the Browns in this one So to cover. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't. You know, Joe Burrow's finding his way. Your first primetime matchup, that's tough. Cleveland's defense, while not, you know, the best in football, much better than what they look like against – Baltimore well and and the yeah the Bengals defense has been upgraded from last year but they are not the Ravens this is not a team that's going to destroy that offensive line the way that it was destroyed last week the the Browns should be able to establish what they want to establish on the ground with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt uh, I would agree with you I would I would take the the Cleveland Browns side of it so if that is the case does that mean that the Bengals are throwing the ball more can you trust any of these wide receivers? Did you like what you saw from A.J. Green week one? Yeah, I mean, it, it was nice to see him heavily involved, be the first read on a number of plays, had a touchdown stolen away from him that would have really defined his week, right? So uh, I was optimistic there. I think Green and Beckham have pretty solid weeks this week. We may talk about them tomorrow. Oh, my. Uh, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to this game, Mike. You, you know, like you said, not only the quarterbacks, number one versus number one, but there just are a lot of fantasy players in this game. Joe Mixon, can he bounce back after a, a, a tough week one against the Chargers? 
And then Jason brought it up, Nick Chubb. Kareem Hunt had a better fantasy week in week one than than Nick Chubb did, and I think Hunt's going to have his targets each and every week. Yeah, he, he absolutely will, but I'm back in for Nick Chubb. This this is a Nick Chubb week to me. I, I think the Browns will be far more competitive in this game. You won't have to abandon the run like they did uh, last week against the Ravens when they were just getting absolutely demolished. I think if they turns, watch, that turns into Kareem Hunt. I think if they watch the tape, they're going to say, we need to abandon the pass because <laughs> Baker was so bad. And they're going to say, we really need to abandon that early and stick with it. Um, that's their best chance. 21 for 39 for 189 yards. Baker Mayfield Man. last week. I thought the Joe Burrow debut was... Uh, above average, considering the f the defensive front he was facing, Joey Bosa, the pressure. Um, so I, I'm excited to, to watch those two play. Now, neither quarterback is a fantasy option this week. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that, yeah. So Nick Chubb, he's in your lineup. Joe Mixon, he's in your lineup. Kareem Hunt, is he a flex option in this game? Yeah. Okay. Kareem Hunt a is a flex option every single week until proven otherwise. Kareem Hunt or Devin Singletary? Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I would go Kareem Hunt there. Cream Hunt or Melvin Gordon in the Ooh. tougher matchup against Pittsburgh? Uh, because of the Philip Lindsay injury, I would probably go with Melvin Gordon. I mean, Royce Freeman will rise from the fantasy ashes and be on the field and get some snaps, but I don't think they will give Freeman the – the market share that they wanted to give to Philip Lindsay. It's going to be a lot of Gordon. So One of the storylines from week one was how bad Saquon was on the ground. He still had an okay fantasy day considering six catches and, you know, Gordon can catch the ball out of the backfield. I think I would lean the full timer there, but mm -hmm. it's close. Agreed. Uh, Beckham, only four of his 10 targets last week were catchable. So it's hard to not be frustrated with Odell Beckham because, I mean, as a fantasy football player, you – you deserve to be mm -hmm. because this is a just a uh, this is like last season for the Browns and then you watch through the credits and there's another scene at the end and right. the scene is the same as the whole other I part see of the why they deleted this one <laughs> yeah you I mean, say <laughs> just a ball sailing over Odell here's here's the issue but, only, but Mike he's healthy only four yes. of ten deemed catchable and yet somehow some way Baker can throw catchable balls to Jarvis Landry there is a sink issue here, and last year I gave it the injury. It, it, it was just what Andy said. It was it was exactly what it looked like last year. Baker just, for some reason, can't connect with Odell Beckham. I feel like I am going to make the switch sooner than later to what, to what I did last year to believing that Jarvis is the number one fantasy option on this team, and it's kind of taking the, uh, the Browns approach that Andy mentioned uh, early this week, saying we've got – it's a prove it to me situation before I change my mind. Not, you know, I'm not going to try to prognosticate something that I have never seen because it's my hope. Well, I think this is the make or break game for me, for Beckham. I'm calling for the breakout game in prime time, uh, at home and against the Bengals. If he does not deliver this week, he's going to be the single most annoying player to deal with for the remainder of the season. Uh, because that's the worst case scenario. Super talent, tons of targets, never gives you a fantasy game. It's a, it, it just doesn't make impossible. sense. So this is I'm gonna call for the breakout. This right. week, and then I'm never speaking his name again. Well, let me he, let me test that, deliver. Andy. Odell Beckham, get it out of the way. It's Thursday, or Hollywood Marquise Brown versus Houston. Oh golly, I'll take Beckham. Okay, Odell Beckham, or. DK Metcalf with the the now cooking Russell Wilson, but DK Metcalf is playing Beckham. the Patriots. Beckham. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm all in on Beckham this week, and then um, I'll see if I end up regretting that decision. Uh, outside of A.J. Green on the Bengals side, is there any wide receiver you would start? Uh, probably not. I, Tyler Boyd, while he is a, a good player, um, I need to see Burrow. Put up a little bit more consistent uh, fantasy points. He's only had one week, but I'm saying I need this is I need to see it from Tyler Boyd. Meanwhile, John Ross was actually on the field 84 percent of the snaps for the Bengals, which led the team. Uh, I believe that you know we'll see AJ Green start flipping that eventually, but I'm not I'm, I'm playing AJ Green and Mixon, and that's yeah, that's it. I agree. This is uh, and and for the record, and I was saying this Sunday while watching the games, AJ Green looked very good to me. 
Uh, I've been trashing A.J. Green, and obviously he did not have a good fantasy game, but that doesn't always match up with what you see. Looking at his game, I was optimistic for um, a, a, a return to relevance, but it is just him and uh, Joe Mixon. If there was anyone else, to me it would be John Ross, but I don't want to play that game. Austin it, Hooper. That's where I was going to go. Austin Hooper could be a sneaky play this week. Target for, you know, Baker Mayfield and no David Njoku anymore. Uh, if you didn't drop Austin Hooper after week one, are you hanging on for one more week and seeing what happens here? Yeah, I am. Are you? But are you starting him? I think he's start worthy. He's in the group of about 20 tight ends that are Tyler all – Tyler Higby or Austin Hooper? Tyler Higby. Higby. Logan Thomas from Washington that's against a great, Arizona. That's a great you, name. You grabbed him off the wire. Are you going to play him? I would start Austin Hooper there. Okay, I'd go with Thomas. Greg Olson or Austin Hooper? Greg Olson. Yeah, Olson looks to be the third target in that offense. Jimmy Graham or Austin Hooper? Jimmy Grandpa. Jimmy oh, Grandpa. Oh, Jimmy Grandpa. All right. A <laughs> uh, reminder, take your Thursday night players out of the flex position. Make sure that if you are playing Beckham or A.J. Green, they're in your wide receiver slot. Uh, don't make the mistake of leaving them in your flex and then a player gets hurt at the end of the week and you don't have flexibility for your lineup. And alternatively, because we don't usually give this piece of advice – but if you flip it on its head and you've got players that are playing on the Monday night football game, put them into your flex. Ah, yes. Uh, because I, I know someone in our leagues uh, had Golden Tate and didn't have a pivot because the, he was in a wide receiver spot on Monday night football. Mr. Gorbelage. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Tear down this ball. All right, more matchup preview starts of the week. Taking it to 100 on tomorrow's show. Let's do some mailbag. Bag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right. You got a question for the show. You can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. I caught Mike giving the eyebrows. Oh, the, eyebrows. The, the camera was left on me for to some reason, camera. so I had to do something. Very nice. Um, okay. Instagram question. What are your What's your take on using FAB as a tradable asset in a league? Some leagues allow you to include FAB in trades. Great question. Uh, I feel like this is a debate that it we have in our split. league, and I'm yeah. sitting on two sides of different opinions. So I will be the judge here. Both of you can make your case. Mike, why should FAB be used as a tradable asset? I think it should be a tradable asset because it helps balance out trades. If you're If you're in leagues where picks are able to trade, you know that sometimes you are not compatible with other teams. You say, okay, well, what if I throw in a pick swap? in your favor all of a sudden that trade becomes far more balanced between the two teams i think the same thing uh the same argument can be made for your your free agent budget okay and andy why should fab budget not be used as a tradable asset uh it's preference i like the fab strategy uh, experience to be a season-long event where you are everyone's navigating the same budget throughout the course of the year. A team can't manipulate that budget, have double the fab of another team, those type of things. It's just preference, though. I like, to Mike's credit, like anything that facilitates more trades, if you think that that's better for your league and that's what you prioritize over that fab strategy argument, then I I mean, do what you want. Honestly, you guys both gave such compelling arguments. I was like, Mike, that is a really good point. Oh, Andy, great point. So do what you want for your league. <laughs> well, Either option is do, good. Do you want it, to be the judge of this? And just like, how, how do you weigh in if, after those? If I had to choose, I would say that in a veteran league, meaning you guys have been playing a while, there's no new people here. This is, you're not worried about an even playing field. You're, you're, you all are fantasy uh, lovers. I would allow the trading. Uh, because you are going to make the decisions on whether you make fab mistakes or uh, whatnot uh, on your own. I think what Mike doesn't realize is that no one's going to trade with us in our league anyways, even if you gave us all the fab to trade. That's true. They, they don't like trading with us. All right, voicemail question. Hey, ballers. This is Nick, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. I was curious about your guys' uh, season outlook for Julian Edelman. Should I drop him for – someone more exciting like Campbell or Anderson or any of the other rookies that may be out on my waiver line or would he be worth us holding on to for season long thank you I I'm not extremely 
excited about the passing offense in New England, but I would not be cutting bait on Julian Edelman. I think he's going to be the most frequently targeted option there and probably probably pretty safe as a PPR player. What's interesting about Julian Edelman is, I mean, he for years and years, he is – you know the the engine of the passing game when when it, back when it was Tom Brady. However, he was only on the field for fifty eight percent of the snaps. Now in in that limited time, he still pulled in seven targets and five receptions. So I'm with Andy. I'm not I'm not I'm not bailing out on Julian Edelman just yet. But this is something that you need to keep your eye on. That that maybe he comes out and has another seven target game. But you're just the the snaps are kind of strange then you may want to uh trade high i haven't watched through all of the film of that game yet i'm curious how many of those up you know when edelman's off the field how many of those were designed cam runs you have 15 runs in that game are you using other wide receivers to block you know that's what we saw with cooper cup in los angeles but i'm not ready to to bail out although i am really interested in robbie anderson yeah i really those two options are interesting of robbie anderson and paris campbell they are Hey, they're both going to see a ton of targets. All right, let's go ahead and grab another voicemail question. Hey, guys, big fan. Um, just wondering, should I go with Antonio Gibson or Mark Ingram as my flex? Oof. Thanks. Now, to to clarify, was he saying his name is Big Fan? Yes. It could have been. Because it's like, hey, fan. guys, big fan. It's yeah. a subtitle for all of our listeners. <laughs> big, big fans? Big fan. Oh, man. Okay, so Antonio Gibson, he gets to play Arizona. Mark Ingram, limited this, opportunities. This is when the data is sometimes a betrayal of reality. I believe Arizona may show up so far through the year as the number one team to play a oh. running back against, but it was a yeah, singular. Throw that out. It was a singular play by Raheem Mostert in a passing route, ends up being the most fancy points against at the running back position. I think I'm going to play. Um, Mark Ingram in this one. Yeah, I'll play Mark Ingram as well. I'll let Gibson – I'll give him one more week on my bench here. Hopefully hopefully we see the, the Gibson breakout this yeah, week. I That'd mean, be great. You know, I, I bought Ingram as a top 20 back, so I, I'll, I'll play Ingram here. But I don't view Gibson as a must stash and bench this week. I do think at a flex situation, if you don't have a Mark Ingram, Gibson is uh, – I, I think you can play him in a pinch this week. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. A Twitter question from Matthew. Full PPR rest of season. Great question. Can't wait to talk about it. Awesome Eckler or Jonathan Taylor in a full PPR rest of season. Oh, So glad you asked it. I saw this in the doc. I wasn't sure if we were going to ask this question. I love I this question. I asked it. I, I love you. <laughs> um, to me, it's Jonathan Taylor. And I don't – I mean, it's 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 clear to me. You have – I mean, a lot of it's the Jonathan offseason Taylor. narrative of whether or not – Tyrod Taylor and it's only one game but whether or not he would throw the ball to Austin Eckler that's where he really makes his hay in fantasy regardless let's say he starts throwing the ball he sees the error of his way starts throwing the ball that offense stinks as a whole right the, the scoring opportunities with the quarterbacks there are not going to come come along give me a super prospect in Jonathan Taylor with a great offensive line a much better offense who Oh, caught six passes in his yeah. first game. Yeah, that's that, the funny part is you have Rivers shifting over to the Taylor side, and he's just the offensive line, the the situation, so much better for Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, it's Jonathan Taylor, and it's not particularly close. It would be interesting, and we'll go top of head here because I didn't have this planned. Running backs that you want ahead of Jonathan Taylor rest of season in general. Oh, okay. So you've got the big three. I assume you still want Saquon, Zeke, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. You will probably want Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, and Clyde Edwards-Helaire ahead of him. I would. Those three would be ahead of them. I would want uh, I Derrick Henry. I would still take oof, Josh Jacobs. Yes time. or no? Ahead of Jonathan Taylor, rest oof. of the season. That's yeah. where the line is, right there. That is that is where the line is. I, I I would rather have Josh Jacobs. The fact that he was involved in the passing game, as we hoped. But, but week one said, yeah, he is going to be more involved in the passing game. Uh, I will take him. And that, then, one, that one is very, very difficult. Yeah. And then that's the end of the list. I mean, to me, <laughs> breaking news. Ooh, that is terrifying. We do have news from Adam Schefter this morning. Miles Sanders and Lane Johnson both on track to play this week against Los Angeles. Oh, okay. 
Miles, could have used you last week. About uh, my buddy. A hundred of my fantasy teams <laughs> rejoice. Yeah, I mean that that team overall needs to be able to threaten on the ground for Carson yeah. Wentz to look better too. So, all right. Um, I think that's uh, it. Think Miles that's Sanders or Jonathan Taylor. 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 Yeah. Kenyon Drake or Jonathan Taylor. 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 Hey, hey, you can ask me one with one of my my guys. Joe Mixon. Or Ooh. Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Uh, look. If it, you knew ahead of time. Yeah, it, <laughs> Mar the, the Marlon Mack injury changed the entire landscape of things for, for Jonathan Similar Taylor. Similar to when Andy. Damian Williams opted out of the season. And yes. it changed the entire landscape for Clyde Edwards. All right. Final question, Andy. Jonathan Taylor or James Conner? <laughs> <laughs> That's just a poke at you because you have a <laughs> I'm so glad uh, that I have Benny Snow. Oh yeah, and I'm so I so want out of my James my one James Conner team so badly. <laughs> it also has Jonathan Taylor though. That is true. Yeah, that is baby, true. you have both. I uh, I did a little Swapsky there. All right, that does it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.